Hi there, Nimble Superman back again. It's been a while uh, since I've been here. Uh, just wanted to kind of check in with you guys, um, you know, because a lot of things going on at DC right now. Uh, it's a really exciting time. It's, it's just unbelievable. Because um, I guess anybody who doesn't know me personally, um, I'm a huge DC fan, man. Like, you know, you can see up here, I got a bunch of posters. Yeah, one of these days, I really got to show, you know, my comic book collection and uh, the other things I have in my room, the statues and that kind of thing. <clears throat> Sorry, I uh, got a weird voice today. Um, and I'm a big DC fan. And um, it's been a lot of amazing news as of late. And uh, I thought I'd just kind of put in my opinion on it. Um, the biggest thing uh, is Rebirth. I, I've done a video um, just kind of talking about my original predictions and how far off they were. I don't think anybody really came close with their predictions of what was going to happen. Um, it's just un unbelievable, really. And then, you know, the promotion of Jeff Johns, which I wanted to talk about a little bit, um, just to kind of give my opinion on it. Um, Obviously, it's great news, you know. Um, you know, some people, I wouldn't say a lot of people, mostly people think it's a great thing, and I do too. I, I think it's a fantastic thing, um, because I think the biggest problem we've had uh, with the movies is this huge disparity uh, of people working on it, uh, of people that, you know, they, they don't know the characters and the history of the characters uh, very intimately. Um, my guess is a lot of the time they're just reading, I don't even know, the Wikipedia pages? <laughs> or, you know, they're just sitting in on, like, I don't even know, maybe a 20-minute presentation from DC. I don't know how it goes, but obviously a lot of the people working there don't have as huge of a history. Now, a lot of people argue that Zack Snyder is, uh, is our guy on the inside. And I don't can't agree with that at all um he just doesn't feel uh he, he just doesn't feel like he has much of a connection to the dc characters other than frank miller other than frank miller's work other than that like it, it just it just doesn't feel like it superman doesn't feel like superman batman's a little bit off i wouldn't say much off but the whole killing thing we got to get that handled um and wonder woman we didn't do enough with wonder woman you know, I like Wonder Woman in the movie. I like her as a character. Um, but for the most part, she didn't do enough. So we don't really know exactly until her movie comes out um, what she's going to be like. So that's going to be interesting. But getting back to Jeff Johns, for me, it's it's a really great decision. Because now you've got somebody who's going to be on set, who's going to be at every meeting. And he's going to be able to give everything he's got now. Because before he had to oversee the comics a lot of the time and, you know, uh, some of the TV shows. But now he's going to be focusing on the movies. And one of the biggest things that people have said, and Jeff's come out and said it too, is that um, he doesn't have much power. Um, which I don't think is the point. I think a lot of the time, it feels like a lot of these decisions that they've done with the first two movies, Man of Steel and BBS... A lot of it feels like Zack Snyder. Now, I might be totally off base, <clears throat> because I'm not in there. But it just feels like people are making decisions um, where they don't really have a knowledge of these characters. And how they operate, what they talk like, what are what are their goals. It just feels like we they don't know them. And uh, having Jeff Johns there, you know, uh, fully in there, it... It's an unbelievably great thing. We just... It can't be understated of how important it is. Um, because now we've really got somebody on the inside that's going to speak for us. The comic book fans. And normally, you know, just a promotion like that wouldn't mean much. But after the direction of Rebirth and a lot of what they're saying and, and going with... Um, it really feels like DC is going to be changing a lot. And that's a that's a great thing. <laughs> you know, not to totally shit all over the New 52, but 
you know, and DCU, the that whole event they had last year, and you know, basically the last year's worth of comics for DC. Um, I just, I just don't feel it was as good um, as we could do. Um, it's not what I wanted, you know, and I think there's this real disparity between. Um, can we do something creative, but also do something people want to see? And I feel like Rebirth, we're getting back. We we figured it out. That's what it feels like to me. You know, um, it might have come out of nowhere. Who knows? But it, it like after reading Rebirth, it was it was one of the best comics I've read. Um, I don't know really any other way to put that, uh, because my favorite comic before that, um, I'm not saying this is my favorite, but or uh, Rebirth is my favorite. I'm stumbling over my words, um, but Green Lantern Rebirth that was like that was like my favorite book uh, ever, um, just from beginning to end, and and how you really reboot something. It just it just felt great, you know, and. This whole book, Rebirth, it just, it handled so many problems that we've had with New 52. Gave us answers and really put us in the direction to do more, to, to do better. And um, I just couldn't be more happy about it. I, I just really couldn't be more happy about it, if you can't tell. <laughs> oh, Okay, so I guess I got that out of the way. So I guess I can talk about... Um, my comics load. Yeah, because that was the original intent. I, I figured I'd just merge the videos and just talk and rant and what my feelings are about everything. Um, so I guess uh, I'll talk about fi Just Like 50 and Rebirth first. It just seems the uh, natural thing to do. Um, 50 comes first. Yeah. This, um, Dark Side War has really just been... Uh, a dream come true. It, it, it really has been. Uh, the art in this is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Jason Fabic is uh, my favorite artist, if anybody doesn't know. Um, I'm just a huge fan of his work. He's, I think, the best artist in comics right now. I mean, when you're in the company of, uh, you know, Jim Lee... You're in, you're in pretty good company. Yeah. Dark Side War, um, I feel like it wasn't the, the best uh, executed series uh, in terms of story. Uh, I definitely have some issues with it. Um, but for the most part, I, I thought it was pretty damn good. I think it was the best thing we've done with Justice League, um, really, since we started. Yeah, I can I can honestly say that. I think it was the best thing we've done. And uh, I just can't wait to see what uh, Jason Favick does next. Yeah. There was a lot of things um, talked about in this book uh, that lead really into Rebirth. Yeah. Um, how this all ends. Um, I guess I'll spoil it. Um, you know, Wonder Woman having a twin brother. Uh, the whole Joker with the three three Jokers things. I think that was actually really cool. I really do. Um, because at first, it seemed like, you know, we were just gonna we were just gonna do Joker's uh, origin, and I, it's not that I was skeptical. I was just kind of I just didn't know really what to make of that. Because um, like, what does that mean? You know, we're we're doing or the origin of the Joker. Um, because I, I thought one of the things they were going to build up with Rebirth, and w what my biggest thing was, was that Joker was going to be the reason that the New 52 timeline happened. I had no idea how they were going to spin that, but I thought that was it. They were going to, like, trace Joker's origins to be something cosmic. Um, but he feels more like a victim of the New 52 rather than a, a perpetrator. Which is interesting, and I'd like to see what they're thinking on that, where they're going to go with it. Um, I hope that comes up in the Batman books. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I think that's. I think all that is next year's plan. I really do. 
So you have twin brother for Wonder Woman, three Jokers, um, and the death of Superman. Um, that uh, that was kind of crazy. That's that's another book I got here. The uh, death of Superman. You know, I think for the longest time, I think I just assumed that um, they just weasel their way out of it. You know, it's like, oh yeah, you're talking about killing Superman, but like, you're going to really kill Superman. And boy, it feels like it. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I mean, I mean, death is never permanent in comics. Um, so it doesn't, it, God only knows how long they're going to go with this, but um, I like the storyline a lot, uh, to be honest with you. I thought it was a huge improvement over what we had before. I think in the New 52 era of Superman, this rivals the Doomed era. Um, which I liked, but not perfect. This I liked, not perfect. Um, I guess my, my opinion on um, killing New 52 Superman, I just feel like I just feel like it wasn't necessary. Um, I've heard people compare it to the, or really say that uh, it was DC giving up on the 52 Superman. And um kind of feels like it. Um, I'm not sore about it or anything. Um, I think creative-wise, you know, you can do anything, you know. Um, but... Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a huge fan of the direction of New 52 Superman. I didn't mind the suit. The suit was the least of my problems. And it really, I don't know, it's kind of frustrating hearing so many people having problems with Superman's suits. Good lord. Like, why can't Superman be like other heroes and have a different suit every now and then? Like, is it really that big of a deal? Like, Batman has a different suit all the time. Why can't Superman? I, I don't know. I don't get that. But uh, I just didn't like the... Um, the direction with Wonder Woman. Just hated really every minute of that. <laughs> you know? Really just every minute of it. Just, oh, God. Like, they just shouldn't be together. And it, it's it's really as simple as that. You know? They just shouldn't be together. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's funny. They talked about that in, like, John Byrne's Superman. And it last. It didn't even go... It didn't even last at all. And it was like... The conclusion to that was very, uh, very mature of them and made sense. Like, I think they were going to go on a date, but then they realized, I, this is in the John Byrne era, um, it's off the top of my head, um, but they just basically kissed and realized that, like, this is wrong, <laughs> you know, we, we got nothing in common, this isn't going to go anywhere. It reached this logical conclusion, so it was just really frustrating to see. You know, Superman and Wonder Woman be together for, gosh, how long? Two to three years? In the continuity? I mean, book after book. And, oh, God, it's just so annoying. You know, when it's, when you know what you want, you know, and then the company just continues to just, you know, not give it to you, you know. So, in, in that respect, yeah, I, I would rather see pre-Flashpoint Superman you know, if you give me a choice. But I just feel like it wasn't the answer. The new 52 Superman. I have, you know, big opinions on Superman because he's my favorite character. Um, but, yeah, that's my opinion on it. It just wasn't the answer, you know. It wouldn't take much to, you know, um, play with Superman's memories like, you know, with Wally. You know, it wouldn't take much to just, you know, zap him, you know. And maybe that's tragic for Wonder Woman, but, you know, I don't think it would take much to to do that with all the characters, to be honest with you, or or just to be selective in their memories. I mean, if we can do it with Wally, and, and it seems like his memories are getting uh, dissolving by the second, you know, by rebirth, but, you know, that's that's okay, you know, like, maybe they can play with having some memories. And I would like them to do that with Superman. I think that's that solves a shit ton of problems with New 52 Superman. Uh, just give him selective memories. Um, and I've, another thing, I thought Rebirth was going to be 
more reality altering. Again, I had no idea what Rebirth was and, and what a great surprise it was, but I thought it was going to be more reality reality altering. And it might be yet. I, I really think we're leading to like another crisis and another reality kind of thing. I don't know. I, I kind of hope so. I know a lot of people hate, you know, reboots and relaunches. I never understood that. I can see people not liking reboots. I can understand that, you know. But I don't understand people hating relaunches. I don't get that. Because it's fun to just uh, sit there, you know, and... Um, you know, and find out what the company's going to do. And, you know, it makes things interesting. It, it, it really does. It makes things more interesting, you know. Um, so I wouldn't mind them, you know, the next event they do have a little bit of reality altering. Just a little bit. Not a lot. Just little things. Like Superman's parents coming back. That would be huge. And when I say parents, I obviously mean the Kents. That would be huge. Especially for Superman fans, and especially for fans of New 52 Superman, who want to see a younger Superman. Um, and especially with different relationships with his with his villains. Um, because that's the one thing, bringing in pre-Flashpoint Superman. That's one of the things that's different, is he's already got memories of, you know, villains. Like in the Lois and Clark book, when he uh, went out and got Cyborg Superman, Hank Henshaw, from pre-New 52... He tried to uh, stop that accident that, that caused him Cyborg Superman. I, I can't remember. It's off the top of my head. But that kind of thing, it ruins, it ruins the possibility of future stories, you know, with, um, you know, his, his villains, you know. Um, so I, I hope Pref New, or, uh, I hope New 52 Superman comes back eventually. Um, that's what I think. I, I hope he eventually comes back. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if he didn't. Yeah, I think... I, re I really wouldn't be much surprised at all. I think he's got to come back, because, I mean, what's this... Uh, what's New 52 Lois supposed to do, you know? Um, I, I, I want to see her with Superman, you know? So, yeah, I guess that's my views on the death of Superman. Uh... Getting back to Rebirth, I, I kind of had to talk about that because, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Superman fan and I want to see him do well. But the state of where he's at with Rebirth, with pre-Flashpoint taken, really taken off, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is the short-term solution and, and really fixes um, the excitement level for Superman um, in the comics dramatically. And then, you know, all the, all the big stuff that happened in just like 50 you know, leads into Rebirth, the one-shot. Uh, right off the bat, I really want to say, um, I really appreciate DC putting it off at two ninety nine. That um I'm really glad they did that. Now, maybe they did it because they knew people were going to buy Justice League and, and Superman. Maybe they just knew they were going to get their money back. Or <laughs> maybe business-wise, they knew that, you know, they'd be able to get it. But uh, two ninety nine, you know... um I'm really glad that they're making this push to go back to that, um, because comics are just way too expensive. Um, when you think about it from a marketing perspective, you know, in the state of the uh, the entertainment kind of industry and, and market, you know, it just doesn't make sense for people to to buy ten comics a week. I mean, think of that. I mean, that's it's like what thirty, forty bucks. I mean, how many people are going to spend, like, 40 bucks on comics every week? Very few. Very few. I'm one of them, of course. But, you know, I can understand it. I mean, Christ, you know, it's like you can buy so much other stuff for 40 bucks, you know? And who's got 40 bucks, really, anyways? You know? Um, Rebirth, man. Oh, I was so looking forward to this book. I couldn't help but get spoiled. I'm gonna throw that out there, but I think that, but really, uh, this time I, I kind of went looking for the spoilers, and I do not do that. <laughs> I really don't. I try and like to keep spoilers down to a minimum, um, but this book, you know, I just I had to know. It was really that strong. I had to know what Rebirth was. Um, 
I found out from Bleeding Cool. Uh, by the way, Bleeding Cool. Uh, Bleeding Cool. They are such a great website, man. Oh, hats off to them. I love their I love their site. You know, what I love about them is uh they're so reliable. You know, like they they put out stuff that's that's the truth. You know, if they're going to put out rumors, they're going to say this is a rumor and this is our opinion on the rumor. And if it's fact, we're going to tell you it's fact. And um they're they're just such a great site. But anyways, they had the spoilers up there. <laughs> And I, I think I read one sentence, and I, it just blew my mind. One, Wally West was back. Two, there was three Jokers. And three, Dr. Manhattan was responsible for the New 52 universe. And I remember seeing that late at night and just like, what? <laughs> like, my mouth just, like, just dropped. And I didn't know what to make of it. That's when I knew. I was like, Oh my god, I gotta freaking read this thing. Like, oh my gosh. And there's this wicked page there. Wicked art from Batman. And he's holding up the smiley pin from Watchmen. And it's like, oh my god. That picture is just worth a thousand words alone. I mean, that's insane. When you think about it. That, that is really just insane. <laughs> you know? Oh my god. That's so fucking cool. It's unbelievable. I don't know what it means. I've heard people were pissed about it, but, I mean, I think it comes down to, like, what kind of DC fan are you? You know, are you a Watchmen fan, or are you a DC fan? To me, I'm a DC fan. And, to be honest, I was kind of taken back at first, because I was like, wait a minute, I thought Watchmen was one of our Earths. And then I was starting to think, well, maybe they're not. Maybe they've been just kind of pulled away from it, you know? Um... Which was, was, man, what a reveal. Like, man, I don't think anybody would have predicted that. And I think that's why they wanted everybody to read it and not get spoiled. Because, gosh, that was a good reveal. Um, this is a really great book. This is what Jeff Johns does. Like, everybody wonders, what, like, what, what does, like, Jeff Johns do that makes him so good? Why is he, like, so the best? And it's, it's his, his ability... You know, to, to bring out emotion and characters and to make things personal. And I really feel like with heroes and uh, and hope and inspiration, that's all get tied gets tied to, you know, emotion with characters. That's why his Green Lantern runs so good, because that's all about emotion and exploring emotion. That's why it's so good. Um, one of the things with Rebirth, um, it's not a reboot. I've heard people say it's a reboot. You're, you either didn't read it or you're just purposely being a dick. <laughs> it, it doesn't get rid of anything, really. Um, it's still where we're at, you know? And it's not like Wally West um, in this uh, was from the pre-New 52. The way they explain it is Wally was there in New 52, you know, and he was, you know, doing his thing. He was with the Teen Titans and that. Something happened. He was put in the Speed Force. And ten years was taken from us. And while he was in the Speed Force, I think he's had memories of, you know, pre New 52 um, and Linda and um, and has seen them, you know, the, the Watchmen were being watched uh and he's kind of brought back. And that's important to remember. Because it's like, this is, again, sticking to Rebirth. And I like how they're really true to their words. You know, when they were promoting this. It, it really is not a reboot. It's a rebirth. And to me, this is like the definition of what rebirth is. It's like the template of how you actually reboot something. Instead of, you know, starting from scratch. You know, you just take whatever everything you have and you push it forward in exciting new directions. And this is what this book is, you know. Um, it's just fantastic, you know. And um, it brings up for other people. It answers one thing that uh, I think a lot of people, like, either forgot um, or didn't really even think about. And um, it's like, why doesn't Batman... Remember the letter. 
you know, because that was one of the big things of Flashpoint, how it ended. Uh, Barry had brought a letter from Thomas so Thomas could give to, to Bruce, and that was like the big ending of Flashpoint, was Bruce was able to read a letter from his father. You know, that was a great ending. And they never brought that up after. For like four or five years. And I always thought of that. I'm like, okay, so Barry shows up, gives the letter to, to Bruce, and I guess he slowly loses his memories. You know? And I guess that, that was it. You know, and then we just went along on the ride of the New 52. And now, like, what I love the most about this is we're actually exploring where the New 52 came from. Because I think at the end of the day, that was the problem. The New 52 didn't it felt like a stunt, and it didn't feel like a story. What it should have been. It should have been a story. After five years, okay, we're getting the story now. That's why this is really good. It's not because Wally is back. It's because we're finally sitting around, and we're finally talking about where the fuck did the New 52 come from? Instead of it being a stunt. Um, another thing, too, is I've heard people say this feels like an apology. And you know what? I have to agree. Um, it does sound a little, I guess, conceited. Um, I guess it makes you sound like a dick when you say that, but it, it's kind of true. And especially with Jeff, you know, going around to, to reporters and people um, and talking to them and, and really communicating... Like, he's really being open about it. This is what really brings a smile to my face, is his problems with New 52. And he brings up Superboy. And gosh, that's so true, you know? And I remember that distinctly when it first came out. And uh, I wanted to get into Superboy so badly. And I just remember it being so fucking shitty. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was Lobdell. If I'm not mistaken... Uh, I know he did Teen Titans, and I think he did Superboy. Don't quote me on that, but that's kind of... I just hate Scott Lobdell. But, yeah, Superboy just sucked. And, like, you know, the, the, we lost a lot of the hope and inspiration. And it's really been uh, the tone of DC really past... Really since New 52 started. A much more grim, darker take on on the DCU. Um... And gosh, it's, you know, everybody's complained about it. Um, I've, you know, said things about it. And it's it's great now that um, we're addressing it now. I gotta get some Gatorade. <clears throat> but, um, you know. <sighs> Excuse me. But, you know, that's why I think it was so great. You know, it, it really shows that, man... This really is a rebirth. This is, really is a relaunch, a new direction, and a, definitely a direction that I can get interested in. Because it feels like we're really making something for comic book fans again. You know, we're, we're really stopping the... the I, I, I can't say stopping, but we're just going to stop focusing so hard on getting new people into comics and get back to taking care of the people who, ta who pay the bills. I... I if that makes any sense. So, Rebirth, obviously, is a thumbs up. Anybody who, you know, comes to me or whatever asks me in my opinion and my review of it, I don't give out stars or anything like that. I'd really give a thumbs up, thumbs down. Is it worth your money? Is it worth your time? That's my view on it. Rebirth, I think it is. I think it's definitely worth your money. I mean, it's two ninety nine for, like, 80 pages. I mean, that's insane. Um... Pick it up. I, you know, a lot of people are saying, is it safe to come back to DC? I think it was always safe to be with DC. I don't think it was ever really that bad. Um, but this is definitely a great time to come on board with DC. That's that's definitely what I'll say about it. Um, it's a huge, overwhelmingly hugging thumbs, a high thumbs up. Um, Justice League is too, man. Just anything with Jeff Johns and Jason Favick. Come on. That's a must-buy. Um, and then Superman 52. <sighs> I think it's a thumbs-up. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't that great. Um, 
The one moment I did like, though, I didn't like the stuff he was with Wonder Woman, because, you know, I hate Wonder Woman. Or I don't hate Wonder Woman, but I hate their relationship. But I love what Superman says there, and it's such a Superman line. And, you know, when he's dying and that, the last thing he says, you know, surrounded by his, fa his friends, what a lucky man I was. Gosh, that is a Superman line. That's That's just totally him, like... In a nutshell. <laughs> it really is. It really is him in a nutshell. I just, I really love that line. So, yeah, I, I would say it's a thumbs up. Uh, Flash 52, I'll try to make these a little bit faster. <laughs> Didn't even try to do that. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> wow. You ever do that? Like, you just say puns and you just didn't even try it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Flash 52 um, kind of clues up what they got going uh, with the, the storyline. So, you know, number one is a, is a really good jumping on point. Um, uh, I guess the big highlight of this is kind of a spoiler. Um, but Rid Riddler comes to Central City. Yeah, um, Flash is fighting the rogues. He's fighting fighting uh, Riddler. And then the rogues have to team up. Uh, it's it's a really cool, fun story. I like the art. Um Van Jensen is writing this. Um, it just felt really cool. It was a, it was a really cool, like, four-issue arc. I think it started with 49. Um, I wouldn't say you have to pick it up, because, you know, Rebirth's right around the corner, but I, I think if you're picking up Flash, yeah, I think you're going to be uh, happy about the conclusion. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, Suicide Squad, Most Wanted, number five of six. Um, I gotta say, anybody who doesn't know the formatting of this book, um, the way it works, excuse me, the way it works is there's, um, you know, two solo stories, basically in the one book. It's basically two monthly books in one, which explains why it's four ninety nine. Um, but gosh, it's great, you know, there's, and if you haven't figured out, there's one for Deadshot and there's one for Katana. The Deadshot one, I think, has been fantastic. Oh my lord. It's been so damn good. It's basically this confrontation he's got built up with this other dude. Name escapes me at the top of the moment. But their rivalry is so good. You know? And it's what you want, you know? Uh, really from... It's like... You know, because it's so easy to do... Con it's easy to do conflict wrong. You know? It's like... That was my one complaint with the Dark Side War. It didn't really feel like much of a conflict build up, you know, with Anti Monitor and Dark Side. They just just felt like they wanted to fight because they just wanted to fight. You didn't I don't know. It was cool that it was like cosmic and they were really powerful. But you didn't feel the personal connection there. It didn't feel like they really had much reason to fight. These two guys freaking hate each other. And you you experience that. It's just badass as fuck. And the art's really good, too. The Katana one, not gonna lie, I kind of gave up reading that. <laughs> like, I like, this, I like the Deadshot uh, arc so much that I really just bought the book for him. I think I read the first couple of uh, issues with Katana. Uh, but it just, I don't know. I just, I just didn't like it. Just, I couldn't get into it. Um, I do like how they're dealing with Cobra. I love the designs for Cobra. I will say that. Um, but I just, I don't know, I just don't care about Katana, um, the other characters they got in there. They got some of the Suicide Squad members, but I don't know, even that, even that just doesn't save it for me. I, I don't know. I just don't want to buy a book with Katana in it. I don't know, I tried. I tried reading it, it just didn't interest me. Deathstroke, number 18. Um, oh, by the way, uh, you know, Suicide Squad, should you, should you pick it up? Is it worth your time and money? Uh... I think so. Um, it's a little bit on the expensive side. It's four ninety nine instead of you know two or three ninety nine. Um, but the Deadshot one is so good. I can't even tell you how much I've enjoyed it. Um, it's it's just a matter of how much interest you have there. I would say maybe pick up the first one. Um, you know, it, it, it might interest you. Who knows? For me personally, it's uh, you know I didn't even think about it. I just wanted to see the next part with Deadshot. Um, but I, I would say it's a thumbs up. Uh, the next one, Deathstroke, number eighteen. Uh, this is a it's another good issue. I've I've really loved the Deathstroke book since they brought it back. 
um, you know, with Tony Daniel and, uh, you know, and Tyler Kirkham. It's, it's been pretty damn cool, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I just love, uh, gosh, what's it called? Lawman, uh, Snakebite, the other characters in the book, the other kind of villains introduced. Um, and I love, there's another character, uh, Mystasia. The, they're really cool characters. That is, the artwork is great in this. I love the designs. Um, and this is one of those books that Deathstroke doesn't get his ass kicked. <laughs> I don't think he gets his ass kicked. Because <laughs> anybody knows me, that's my biggest complaint. Uh, you know, with the Deathstroke book, is that he just gets his ass kicked, like, all the time. <laughs> like, and badly, too. I think, he, I think he gets hurt here. I can't remember. Uh... Yeah, I don't, yeah, I think this is like the first issue. He doesn't get his ass kicked, um, because you know I'm, I got a friend who's into Deathstroke too, and his that's his big problem with it. And I didn't notice it until he brought it up, and it's so true. Gosh, you know, why is he getting his ass kicked? Deathstroke should never get his ass kicked. You know, he's like he's a badass, and you got to maintain him as a badass. If you know you have somebody like Jason Todd come in and whoop his butt. You you start to lose the sense of uh, of drama or danger level when Deathstroke is on the scene. Because if Deathstroke comes on the scene and he gets his ass kicked all the time, especially by like you know people that you know really shouldn't be kicking his ass, the the, the drama comes down. You know, that's I don't know. I guess that's just my opinion. Um, but despite that. Uh, I feel like the characterization is really on point with him. Um, the art's always great. Uh, it's always just, it's always worth your money. And uh, I, I feel like that it should be like that with any book. Um, Deathstroke, it survived the rebirth. He did get a, he did get a, a book. Um, I'll definitely be picking that up. So, is it worth your time to pick it up before rebirth? Uh, I guess that's personally up to you. Um... I think there's a lot of good Deathstroke stuff within these 18 issues. I think he's going to get one more, 19, and then they're going to put it at number one. So, you know, I, and they're going to keep up the continuity. You know, there's nothing crazy about changing his continuity. So, yeah. Um, is it worth your money? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh I would say yes. I mean, it's Deathstroke. The art's just too good to, to pass up, I think. Uh, just a couple more, I think. Uh, Cyborg, you know, what's really to say about it? this one? Another one-issue kind of story. Um, art's good. It's not John Boy. Uh, John Boy did the cover. I can't remember who did the inside. Uh, Watanabe, maybe? Um, I like this story because it really shows, like, what... Vic can do, you know, because the whole issue he's like in this kind of tube thing, you know, doing upgrades or whatever, um, but like he's trying to handle cr uh, different kinds of uh, crises, uh, you know what I mean, the different events, uh, you know, robberies and that kind of thing, just sitting there, you know, because you can hook up to the internet and things like that. Uh, I really like that aspect. This is definitely an issue I think you can skip. Um, it's well written. You know the 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 art's fine. There's a lot of a lot of really funny uh, moments in this, but ultimately, you know, you don't need to read it. Uh, if you if you want to jump into Cyborg with Rebirth, you can totally do that. Um, this is a, definitely an issue that you can skip. But I, I thought it was quite good. Yeah. Last uh, single issue I've had this week, uh, Scooby Apocalypse Man. When this was first announced, I had mixed views, because um, I, I like Scooby-Doo, I think more than the layman, I would think. I think a lot of people at first, you know, they were really against the designs and the, the whole kind of reboot thing going on with Scooby, and I think a lot of it is, there's generally, like... Two groups of fans, I find, of just uh, just about anything. There's two kind of two classifications. Are you kind of a hardcore nerd about it, or hardcore fan? Or are you just this kind of, you know, 
layman kind of fan where you just kind of generally just have a fondness of it, you know. Um, I guess I guess you could relate it to kind of a, a Christian kind of thing. Are you? And I'm not religious or anything. Just trying to find a comparison. Uh, you know, are you this kind of Christian that goes to church every Sunday, or are you this kind of Christian that barely ever goes, or that kind of thing? You know, what kind of how committed are you to it? Um, and right off the bat, people were like, "My God, what did you do to to Shaggy?" I think Shaggy was the worst one, because Velma looks like Velma, and Daphne looks like. Daphne and Fred and, and, and Scooby. Um, but I think I think Shaggy, everyone was taken back from him. The twirly mustache and things like that. And uh, I can honestly say, after reading this issue, um, I think they should tone it down a little bit with, with Shaggy. Just a little bit, you know. Um, but the way he is in the issue, it's not too bad. I mean, he's got just a mustache and, you know, a little goatee thing going on. So I didn't, you know... I, I actually it actually looks a little bit better in the book. It's it's definitely less uh, twirly. Definitely less twirly uh, of the mustache. Um, but just kind of uh, judging this direction of it, I was surprised on how much I enjoyed it. I got to be honest. Um, I wasn't even going to pick this up, but I just kind of just thought to myself, I'll just give it a shot. I do like Scooby Doo. I would like them to take more of a modern look at Scooby-Doo. Um, and this is exactly what that is. It's a very modern take on Scooby-Doo. You know, they're, they're able to like... It's Scooby-Doo without the cartoon elements in it. You know, and like for Scooby, for instance, um, they totally explain uh, why he can talk. <laughs> and and think and 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 why he's like a little bit dumb and they they have a totally plausible excuse for that and that was just I think sold me the most. Um, Daphne and Fred they're part of this kind of uh, independent uh, news network, uh, kind of like I guess TYT, the Young Turks, which I actually love the Young Turks. Um, they kind of do a play on that. Um, and say that that's what Daphne is. She's kind of a, a reporter kind of thing. And I think a lot of people didn't really enjoy that, but I liked it a lot because I totally respect the independent news networks like that um, and why they do it, because they're so right to do that. I think people who don't understand that were kind of taken aback by that. They didn't. They couldn't get into it as much. Uh, but for me personally, I really love that take on uh, Daphne and Fred. Because it worked for Daphne, and Fred's just kind of brought along there for the ride. Because, I don't know, I think Fred's the one that has the least personality. I don't know. I guess if you really thought about it. Um, Shaggy, they give a good explanation of why he's there with Scooby. And their connection works really well. And then Velma's connection. And they all, like, the first issue really sets things up. You know, I really feel like if you just have a general knowledge of Scooby-Doo, which I, I guess I have you'll just get right into it and it'll feel comfortable and you'll just, I think you'll enjoy it if you're open-minded, you know. And if you don't like Scooby that much in the first place, it's probably not going to pull you in. But if you really like Scooby-Doo and you're hungry for a modern take, again, no pun intended, um, I think this will pull you in. I think my only gripes about it, um, even with Shaggy, I think, um, I think it was still good. Um, maybe toned down a little bit with the twirl of the mustache. Um, and the only other thing is Scooby's glasses. Um, he's got like these emoticon things. Oh, God, that, that just makes me cringe. I just hate it. I hate it so much. It, oh God. Like, why can't he express? You know, because he can think. Like, he's, he's got the, I guess I don't want to spoil too much, but like this kind of, He's been an experimented on, um, so you know he can he can talk and and think and that kind of thing. So why why is it so much that we have to give him these glasses for emoticons to express? I don't know. Like to me, he should be able to express. You know, he shouldn't you know, go too far with it, but you know, he can express a little bit. I mean, it's like Batman's cape and cowl. You know, of how much he can express and you know and. and and of his eyes, because, you know, if you see the white eyes, he shouldn't be able to, like, you know, curl his eyebrows and that kind of thing. But you see that in the mask. 
That's the same thing to me. So, I don't know. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Giffen. He wrote this issue. Um, and it kind of shows. Uh, he's a little bit, um, a little bit too wordy. Uh, for my taste. A lot of dialogue that he puts in. I guess he's trying to show their personalities. Um, but it just kind of comes off as a little bit boring. You know? Just a little bit, but you know, in this kind of issue, they have to kind of talk a lot because there's really a lot to set up. Um, but it works. I think that's the big takeaway from this. It, this modern take, it works. Um, that's I think the best compliment I can give it, and I'll definitely be picking this up. Like, and I hope it does well because it's a really great take on on Scooby Doo, and these Hanna Barbera books they've been doing really well for me so far. I mean. Uh, Future Quest, um, I thought was okay. I'm not huge. See, I have not much of a knowledge of Hanna Barbera. I just vaguely know of it. Uh, I guess Scooby Doo was the one I knew the most, and the one I was most worried about because I actually care about that one. Um, but Future Quest, I was interested in uh, mainly for Space Ghost. Um, I don't know how much longer I'll keep up with Future Quest because I don't really know those characters. Um, I don't really have a fondness or a love for them to keep me going, but, uh, I thought it was well-written first issue for Future Quest. Um, I really enjoyed this. I'm going to be picking up Wacky Raceland. That's another one I think can do really well, so I'm really looking forward to that one. And then I think it's just the Flintstones, I believe. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll be trying that out, so... Yeah, so far so good. Scooby Doo, Scooby Apocalypse. It's I, to me, it's a thumbs up. I thought it was actually quite good. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you should give it a shot. That's my that's my view on it. Give it a shot. Um, just got two trades to kind of vaguely talk about. Uh, Superman Adventures. Uh, this is the second volume. Uh, if you can't tell, it's based on the. Uh, the uh, 90s Superman show that they had. And this was basically the book they had printed, you know, uh, while the show was on. You know, because DC likes to do that. They like to have a comic book, um, you know, along with the, the animated shows or whatever they're doing. And uh, I just, oh man, I love this. The Superman Adventures. Uh, they're really great. They're each, I guess each issue of it is a, kind of a one-shot kind of thing. And it works really well. It really feels like these are episodes they just couldn't make. Because, you know, they uh, just didn't have the episodes or the number of episodes to make them. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy that. The Batman Animated Series 1, that was amazing, too. I'm really hoping they do Batman Beyond. I've been dying for that one. And I really hope they do, I believe, the Justice League. I, I really hope this uh, causes them to want to do more. Because um, I knew they were doing Batman the Animated Series 1. I didn't know how much interest they'd have in doing the Superman one, but, I mean, here we are, Volume 2, so hopefully this keeps going. Uh, I think I'll talk about the other volume in another time, um, but uh, I guess I'll leave it off for now. Um, I think the next video I want to make is a Jason Fabic appreciation video, um, because he's going to be not doing much now for the next while. Um, I think I've seen somewhere that he's hinted that... Um, He's going to be doing something later this year. This is post-rebirth. So he'll be doing something later this year by, by Christmas. And he says Jeff Johns is working on it with him. So take that with a grain. That's, that's a quote from him. I saw the freaking video. So anybody who disputes that is on you. But... Uh, yeah, that's interesting. To me, it's uh, and, he, and he said that it's going to be even bigger than his stuff with uh, Dark Side War. So to me, that's Justice Society. He's going to be doing Justice Society. Um, I could be totally off, but that's my that's my opinion. Um, and I've been wrong before, so you know, take it with a grain of salt. So uh, thanks for listening, guys, um, and I'll see you again next time. See ya. No. Stupid Facebook. <laughs>